Hi, Kevin from Mathsaurus here, and we're about six weeks away from the Junior Maths Challenge 2021, and a question that I'm getting asked a lot is from people who are homeschooled or who are private candidates about how they can enter their students for this Junior Maths Challenge and also for UKMT Maths Challenges in general. So I just wanted to explain the situation and to give a little bit of advice here. Now, the basic situation is that you can only enter the uh, Junior Maths Challenge, the intermediate and the senior maths challenges, all of the UKMT uh, challenges if you're at a registered UKMT centre. And the places that are allowed to be UKMT centres are basically schools in the UK. Um, there's a list on their website of the sorts of institutions that they consider qualifying as schools. Uh, and so the challenges are open to students in those places. So this does make it a little bit difficult if you're, for example, homeschooled or a private candidate um, uh, that wants to take the papers or if you're just at a school that's not a UKMT test centre. So I'm going to talk a little bit here about what you could do uh, if you're in that situation. Just before we do, I want to let you know that I've got a free preparation course for the Junior Maths Challenge uh, out at the moment. Get ready for Maths Challenges ages 10 to 13 and I'll just show you quickly what's in that course before we move on. If you want to get ready for maths challenges for ages 10 to 13, or you just want to stretch yourself beyond the sort of maths you're doing at school, you've come to the right place. This is a totally free course, and in it I'm going to walk you through 20 problems that I've designed specifically for this course. They're challenging problems that will help you prepare for maths challenges and really just help you enjoy maths beyond the sorts of things you're doing at school. For each question, you'll first see the question on the screen, so you can have a go at it and try to work out the answer. Then, if you're stuck or you want to think of different ways of solving the problem, you can watch my video Hint, and then you can have another go at solving the problem. Once you think you've got the answer, you can choose the answer from a selection of multiple choice options on the screen. It'll tell you whether you're right or wrong. Then you can either have another go at the question if you got it wrong, or watch my video Solution uh, if you are really stuck, or if you want to see if there's another way of solving the problem apart from the way that you did it. And it really is a totally free course, so I really hope you'll sign up below and work through these problems with me. So do take a look at that course, it's totally free uh, to sign up and I really hope that's useful for you preparing for those challenges. If you're looking at this uh, in the future, there will probably be courses uh, for other ages as well, so go and check the uh, website out. So what can you do if you're preparing for these UKMT challenges, or you want to, but you're not at a registered test centre? Um, I think your options are more or less as follows. So firstly, possibly the easier case is if you are at a school that could be a UKMT test centre, but they're not currently offering the challenges, then perhaps you could speak to them and try to persuade them to become one. It's actually quite an easy process to become a UKMT test centre if you're already, uh, you know, if you're a qualifying institution. So if you're at a sort of uh, an ordinary uh, school, um, it can be a school that's in the UK. It's also open to schools that are overseas if they're registered educational uh, institutions. So all I would do is write a very polite email to the school uh, explaining uh, firstly that you understand that um, you know they're probably very busy and teaching is very demanding and uh, you don't want to take up too much of their time. It's always nice to acknowledge the person uh, that you're writing to, um, but that you really want to uh, take the challenges or that your children really want to take the challenges. Perhaps if you're willing to you, uh, and you're in a position to do so, you could say you'd be happy to cover the costs uh, of the entry for your own students or for other students as well. It's, it's pretty cheap. It's only at the moment at the time of making this video, it's £13 for 10 entries. So the UKMT do try to keep this cheap. Um, uh, you know, tell them about the maths challenges in case they haven't heard of them. Uh, most math teachers probably have, but you know they're designed to support students' mathematical development, a love of problem solving, uh, and you know it could really be of wider benefit to to your to you and to your uh, children, uh, but also to other students at the school. Tell them how students use the certificates they get for these challenges for uh, university uh, applications and personal statements, and it's you know good for uh, getting jobs and things as well. It's another qualification that. They can get it's not okay. It's not an official qualification, but it's often seen like a qualification in these circumstances. And also, you know, strong performance in maths challenges can just be a sign of a very healthy maths department with engaged students. Can be great for their own internal reviews and for their Ofsted inspections and things like that. Um, now, if you do contact a school, my advice would be to go in the following order. So, start by writing to the head of maths if you know uh, who they are. You can always phone the school secretary. 
um, or the school office and ask them who that person is. Um, if you don't get a response from them or not one you're, one you're not satisfied with, you could then go up a step to the director of studies or the deputy head academic or equivalent position. They'd usually be the line manager of the head of maths uh, in a school. Following that, if you didn't get a response from them, you could write to the head teacher or perhaps you could even uh, write to one of the governors. Most schools usually have a parent governor and a parent governor uh, can be a great way uh, to speak to someone who's more approachable and might be someone who's kind of willing to champion your cause. Um, perhaps you might even want to, you know, in an extreme case, if you really care about this, you could run to become a parent governor yourself and uh, that would give you a great chance of getting these uh, maths challenges rolling in the school that you're working with. Okay, so that's perhaps the easiest case if you're already in a school and they're just not currently doing the challenges. Next hardest case, I guess, is if you're uh, not attached to a, a test centre at all because you're home educated um, or uh, or perhaps because the school doesn't want to become one. And the first thing I would suggest in this situation is perhaps, you know, even if you're mostly home educated, see if there is a local UKMT test centre who might just let your um, children or you uh, sit the test at their school. Um, the requirement is on the centre to be a UKMT uh, test centre and then they can enter students um, you know, for, for, for the challenges uh, from there. Um, that would be a great option. Now there might be some um, difficulties uh, in terms of administration. Again, you know, if you um, express your willingness to help cover the costs and things with the schools or, 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 or something like that, um, then you might have a slightly better chance of getting a student in there. And failing that, it's going to be very hard to actually sit the uh, challenges officially. But I would say if you're in that situation, don't miss out on the chance to do these papers and to, you know, get that love of problem solving and to do these interesting questions. Um, you could still just do the test at home. Now, you won't be an official entrance for the test, but all the past papers are made available pretty quickly afterwards at the official UKMT website and the grade boundaries are made available there too. I've got a page on my website where I collect those grade boundaries together as well. So you could just sit the student um, down at home, uh, print out the paper. If you wanted to do it on the dates that everyone else is doing it, you could use a past paper uh, instead or you could wait a few days or weeks to get the real paper and um, just supervise them under test conditions. You know, all you need for the math challenges is a pencil on a piece of paper and that uh, challenge printed out. And the great thing about it is they're super easy to mark. Okay, so um, the math challenges are multiple choice, so it's just an option A, B, C, D, or E. And the answers then are just A, B, C, D, or E. So to mark them, you just need to be able to, uh, you know, tick across whether they've got the answer right. You don't need any mathematical knowledge at all. And, you know, every question has either five or six marks. Um, you know, you sometimes have to deduct a mark if they get something wrong, but it's laid out really clearly, clearly on the front of the paper. Very, very easy to mark those papers. So you can just get that mark, check it against the grain boundary. Um, if you want to, you can make them a certificate at home or you could just tell them uh, how they've done. And in a way, they really will have exactly the same experience. I mean, the UKMT papers are not kind of like official exams anyway. So it's not like you get a sort of um, exam board approved you know, certified experience when the when the when the UKMT send out the certificates to schools, they just send the school, um, you know, a uh, number of certificates, and the teachers at the school fill in the names uh, on the certificates and hand them out to their own students anyway. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's you, you wouldn't be doing anything crazily different, um, and you could still get the chance to do all of those papers. So that's my advice. Um, as I say, it's quite. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of people in the situation before. It's quite hard to get into these challenges if you're not attached to a test centre, um, but there are ways you could persuade uh, a school um, to become one, or you could go to a nearby school and perhaps just sit the test there, or failing that, just replicate the experience at home. The main thing uh, with these challenges is that students get the chance to do a different type of maths from a school, um, to get better at problem solving and puzzles, and the sort of maths in these challenges is great for all of that. And don't forget, if you want to practice for these challenges or if you just want some enriching material for students of a similar age, you can have a go at my totally free online course, Get Ready for Maths Challenges, ages 10 to 13, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if it has, and I will see you soon.